but like you said, with the tensions being so high with certain aspects of the community, I guess those outliers are a little bit more prevalent. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And you know, I think I think everyone, everything comes back to the to the mean, like eventually, as far as you know, you know, thinking all one way or the other way, and and the truth is always somewhere in the middle. And um, you know, you sort of like. You know, p people are very, very social social creatures. They they just generally do tend to conform. Um, I've I've noticed um, um, so, something of interest because like Solana's been pumping uh, like its ass off and uh, going nuts. Um, you know, uh, a lot of, across the whole whole strain community, there's been a a, a a huge warm embrace for for meme coins this week. <laughs> I, I did five five minutes of re just research, te five ten minutes worth of research, and uh, like um, yeah, it seems like everyone's going. Oh yeah, meme coins are like the, whereas previously they were going no, nah, it's rubbish. <laughs> it's, you know, um, they're now saying um, yeah, no, uh, you know, actually, uh, I I didn't really give this uh, a really proper chance, and all all chains need meme coins, so. Um, so that that was interesting to, to sort of to, I can see I can, I can hear the narrative changing. So it's uh, we're, right. we're being more more accepting of um, you know parts of the, of the community that that are, are a lot a lot of volume and, and it's showing on other chains. Fundamentally, so, it makes sense, doesn't it though? Like, and I, I guess I mean like a meme coin. If I wanted to make a meme coin, it would take me fifteen minutes to go make it because it takes. I think about nine lines of code is all you need to be able to yeah. make a meme coin. So there's buy, sell, send, and that's really yeah. pretty much it. And then uh, because it's so simple, it is just a, it's, it's kind of like what Richard Hart said, it, it is the epitome of speech on the blockchain. And yeah. since it's so simple, everybody can understand it. Now, if I, if I wrote a code, if I wrote a protocol that had, 1400 lines of code on it that shit's going to be particularly complicated and people are going to have to spend time to understand it yeah. that getting that speech out across the blockchain is a lot harder to bring people to understanding with what yeah. it does the meme coins stupid simple it's it's all it's all of your prerogative and it's so, it's great so true. yeah it's great yeah so true but, yeah like uh um I, I retired. I retired from my my like working for a boss in uh, 2022, and uh, I'm I'm uh, ex uh, car industry. So I go three decades in the car industry, and you know I I, I was in this one con like ROI contract, and I went around everywhere, you know, just because I knew I was I was looking at my earnings, and I was looking at my boss going, "You're an idiot," and. Um, you know, how, <laughs> I was earning more money outside work than inside work. And it just got to a point where I go, yeah, no, I'm out. So in the last two weeks I was there, I went and signed up. Well, I gave people some crypto and signed up about 18 people in the whole, I'd signed up the whole dealership. And um, in, in that I found out, um, you know, there was, there was a few people who were already into crypto. And, um, you know, during the course of this, they saw the, the project, I put them in really pumping. And, um, uh, you know, I had a few conversations and uh, it was quite interesting to see what they were involved in. And it was like, you know, Dogecoin <laughs> uh, and and Bitcoin, you know. Um, you know, it, it was just a recurring thing, uh, sh uh, uh, SHIB. Um, and they've gone, I've done really well. Should I, should I hold this or should I sell it? And I go, oh, it's, it's up to you. Just, uh, just if it starts bleeding out, obviously jump out of it, you know, but otherwise... Is, is it making you money? They go, yeah, it, it's been re really good, you know. And it, there was just as much excitement about that than uh, a really good project with a really well thought through to tokenomics by a developer that I knew personally that I was, you know, introduced them to as well. Um, that was uh, earning them less, but just probably more solid to get involved in. Um, but uh, but yeah, me, the, the memes do catch catch people's attention because they are so simple. Um, you know, so uh, you can't under underestimate the power of them because um, they're, they're working. They're working over. Uh, they've worked for a long time over Ethereum. They're working um, big time over uh, on Solana. There's like one launched every five minutes, and I've seen some of the uh, percentages. Like you know, 
40,000% in 24 hours and stuff like that, you know. It's just, uh, you can see what the appeal is. Like, it's it's a lottery ticket. Um, and it's like, it's that gamification of, of the whole the whole space. It sort of makes a mockery a little bit about, uh, uh, compared to the, the more serious projects that are trying to, like, structure something to get financially f people financially free. So, but yeah, you're right. We need the whole spectrum, and, and it, it is speech. So no matter where it comes from, <laughs> Whether you want to hear it or see it, uh, it is all part of the community. So, um, yeah, uh, I think I think the, the tone's changing. I think everything will settle back down, and I think it already is. Like, it, how quickly we we can go, go get so so uh, upset and then all of a sudden come back and then, you know, we can just generally see things calming down a little bit, you know, and the the, the people that are speaking out against other people is sort of like, you know, reducing, you know. Um, but... Um, Someone said that during the week, it takes two weeks, and, and crypto forgets. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you're absolutely right, dude. It, it takes about two weeks, and everybody forgets what's going on, just like 9-11. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, as drastic as and dramatic as that is, it's very true. So if you can just, if you fuck up, I mean, you just go silent for a month, Nobody will remember by the time you come back. Nobody gives a shit. Unless you, like, fucked over people, which is not yeah. ideal. Yeah. Not a thing yeah. to do. You know, people will remember that. But, I mean, like, back to what you were saying about the memes, you know, taking off. Um, I mean, if I had a pretty influential person that I knew didn't have a whole lot of time to listen to my shit, mm -hmm. then, and I, had only, and I only had 10 minutes, and I was going to pitch a meme, after the first minute and I told him it doesn't do shit, but look at the chart, then I got nine minutes to sit there and smoke a cigar with him, you know? Yeah. But if, if I've got to explain some complicated protocol, 10 minutes ain't going to cut it because what we're yeah. talking about here is for you, like you said, a lottery ticket with these meme coins. Um, the one thing that really surprised me is when you saw like 40,000% or some shit like this, it yeah. wasn't surprising when you go look at the liquidity and you see that they've got $5,000 worth of liquidity <laughs> and they've got twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of volume in the one day, then yeah, it's going to 6x your price when nobody has yeah. it and all people can do is buy it. And it kind of assumes this trajectory that other people are going to see without knowing, without looking deeper into the pro into that everything that derives its value pretty much they yeah. just they just leap in but what i've noticed which is congruent with what you're saying is when i go look at some of these meme coins they've got millions of dollars worth of liquidity and they're still shooting up and it's just like well that's different like that's not normal what you would see that type of stuff and i i don't really mess around with meme coins too much because i'm not really a trader I try to stay out of yeah. the trading thing. And what what inherently comes with that type of stuff is not very longevity. You don't have a, a long ecosystem of profitability for very long. Meanwhile, like you were saying, the ones that kind of get slighted because they're working really hard on making an ecosystem that has like backing and all sorts of other things that kind of pretty much a network of people that work together to get a goal of just good shit. It, the goal isn't really to make money. The goal is to have a good product that does what you say it needs to do that people can use as a service. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which sometimes holds a pretty significant amount of value sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, that's something that I think that. Uh, in the Pulse Chain community, that they know these meme guys, they fucking know that. So they go and they do the one minute pitch. They get it, they get the people in, and then they they say, "Here, here is our ecosystem. Here's the more complicated things that we have going on. That now that you're in, you have time while you're gambling to check this other stuff out, right? And you yeah. know what? Even though I say I'm not a trader, I'm still a fucking degen." Just like the rest yeah. of us. Like, yeah, otherwise, yeah, we yeah. wouldn't be here if we weren't willing to take risks for this type of stuff. Sure. And then get interested. So, I mean, yeah, I am 100% in agreement with you. And part of the reason why I continue to keep coming back in here, because you have you took a totally different look at things than what I I kind of, I'm in a cesspool of stuff, stuff, right? Like, I'm in it thick with a lot of stuff. And yeah, yeah. so, if I'm not sticking my head out of that shit, every once in a while and seeing what other things are out there and other opportunities that are out there. I don't know what's passing us by as a team. So uh -huh. you gotta have to do those types of things too. And also yeah. do your, your, you know, what I like to call, you know, your senseless amount of shilling 
too. <laughs> <laughs> Pump your bags. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that, it, it's it, it's interesting uh, to hear you say like uh, re- refer to it as popping your head out from what you'd normally be doing because um, I mean I, I spend I spend uh, quite a bit of my week um, you know just re- just researching stuff that I'm interested in and it could be it could be any rabbit hole you know or any technology or any any uh, t- protocol or, or blockchain as well and it's, it's, it's because I have the time to do it uh, and I really enjoy it so I spend a lot of time doing that and it's not always on pulse chain so uh, but the pulse chain ties into most of the relationships that I've got uh, and that I've made um, uh, and uh, you know, people that have come from other chains that I've been involved in from B&B and all that sort of stuff so um, but, but it's interesting like my this weekend space is, is my, my way I intentionally don't do a lot of research on what's happened during the week, apart from just you know checking the the, the, the notes of what's happened over the last week. So I've got some talking points, but um, it's like you guys are educating me on what's happening on Pulse Chain almost. But um, and then I can uh, I can sort of like uh, it's just interesting discussing exactly what other chains are doing too. So it's it's good we have that that crossover and uh, we can can sort of find out what's going on. There's been some interesting stuff. Um, actually, I wouldn't mind just just touching on it. Um, is that um, there is uh, OKX, which has sort of come up re- recently, but but for a diff- I'm bringing it up for a different reason. They're launching a a, a new L2 blockchain um, called uh, <laughs> called X1. <laughs> so it's an L2 um, and they're, they're launching a, a there's a new uh, dex that's going to be launched on the uh, uh, the first dex which will be, it's going to be called swap x uh, that's done by a developer that I, that I know and spark swap has actually got a relationship as do i with the, the developer of the dex from binance chain so they're going to they're going to be bridging funds from X, this new one a uh, layer one chain um, pretty much out right out the gate, um, SparkSwap is going to be uh, creating the bridge or adding this new X1 blockchain to the SparkSwap bridge. So now, if the SparkSwap bridge will have money coming in from BNB chain, um, Arbitrum, and it'll be the, the first to have this new um, uh, X1 access blockchain, which is the, the blockchain that is being launched by OKX. Okay, X is a centralized exchange. It has fiat on ramps and off ramps, so you can sort of see the synergy. But uh, Okay, X is going to probably get behind their new blockchain and their new uh, premier Dex, which is uh, Swap X. So this is a, a centralized exchange with fiat on ramp and on ramp off ramp that has fifty million users, um, and they're going to have a, a access via Spark Swap to get straight into Pulse Chain. So I just thought it was a little bit timely that that was happening during the week, and I've noticed uh, a couple of the tweets that have got a lot of attention from the community, from, from Richard, just regarding the, the centralised exchange. Yeah, do we need it or don't we need it? Uh, uh, well, what are your, what are your thoughts um, on all that? Well, I mean, kind of you, what you just said is kind of like what it seems. Right, like it seems, it it, it seems like, um, maybe the people who have the most influence behind the scenes, um, have a. It seems like there's like a tur- like a a turf battle. Does that make yeah. sense? In the I should background, have fra- I should have framed that better. I should have said. The the listing the sex listing argument um, is are people missing the point of what Richard's saying and is what I just described the answer as opposed to you know um, sucking up to centralized exchanges because we don't really need to we can just use them yeah that's what I see I see that that yeah. we're not it wouldn't be an access route for us to go from so- sovereign ownership of our wallets and security to giving up that to any centralized exchange but giving them access to what it's like to have your own sovereign ownership of your assets and wallet and stuff yeah they may not they may not know what those routes are and and uh the guys from spark swap are pretty pretty smart 
Like, so I'm, I feel confident, if anything, that they take a route to at least do some fucking thing, for fuck's sake. Why would we stop them? You know what I mean? That's dumb. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. That sounds great. Like, and it does sound like, you know, it, Richard being the, the, I don't know what you'd call him. The, I don't want to say the owner of Pulse Chain, but the, the lead, the lead person with the lead amount of interest with Pulse Chain, at least. Yeah. It, it, it could definitely seem like anything that he says would be, would seem like it's, he would do it to protect himself and his interests. But I mean, that's always been the case with him making statements that seem like they actually are being said to protect the community and not just his interests. But it's all the same either way. So if you choose the side of the fence to attack him from whichever side that you decide to choose, then it's probably not going to go very well if it's him coming back at you or the community coming back at you either way. I I don't know. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I noticed that um, people are taking strong positions. Like uh, Corey Costa um, uh, responded to Richard um, and said, "Absolutely, one way, hundred percent. Um, sex is a, 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 a the, the the way the way forward." Um, and it was yeah, quite absolute. And um, and that got the whole conversation happening with between other people and stuff like that. And again, you can see the the, the differences. Um, and and like I, st- I at the outset, as I started saying, is is often that the truth lies somewhere between the extreme the extremes of opinion. <laughs> um, and um, which is right in, in the respect that um, we, we're we're smart enough as a community to on this chain to to, to have workarounds. And as I as I described with all the other stuff that's going on, like Spark Swap and. You know, Pulse LN. Um, you know, Coast. You know that uh, Coast didn't feature very, very strongly in that uh, in that conversation. I mean, they've had provider, you know, uh, issues, and they're, they're getting that, that that sorted out. Um, it'd be good to actually. Do you know what's happening with, with Coast at, at the moment? Has anyone heard? They, they oh, lost I, the. Oh yeah, all I heard was that their uh, main partner. Oh, what is it called? Sentinel or something like that. I forget. Thank anyway, they're making yeah, they, yeah, they lost their contract, but they're in the process of other contracts. I couldn't imagine how difficult it would be to maintain the red and blue tape on that business. Oh, uh, like uh, there's 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 no one with a harder job because they're they're, they're 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 operating in the in the the the, the legacy world with and tr- and trying to. Uh, uh, bring to market and keep on market um, exactly what the powers that be don't want to see. Um, they want it. They want it to go through a, a regulated exchange. Even the regulated exchanges, um, the sexes that that um, yeah, you, you, your krakens and all, they're, they're all facing um, you know uh, political pressure as well. And and, and uh, you know every single. Uh, if you listen to the the Thinking Crypto podcast, is what well, I, I just generally like to hear that that guy's you know op, uh, opinion on you know, Garrett Gensler and SEC and stuff like that, and you know, um, t- and describing in detail exactly how they're just being, you know, they're just being they're overshooting their their powers all the time. So to know that and still still um, have a big big crack at la- launching uh, Coast. Um, knowing that you're going to face those those headwinds, um, they are the most committed people, you know, I could even think of in, in the space. Um, and hats off to them. Um, I hope they get sort of, The last thing I heard was they had, you know, more than one more than one uh, banking partner they got they have set up, you know, like that 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 have come forward. So it's just a question of yeah, as you say, going through all the red tape, and there's a lot of it. Yeah, I think that they're doing it absolutely smashing, considering all, everything that's up against them and the times that we're in right now. And, and uh, uh, there's so much talk going on about um, AML. Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. So I saw a report today <clears throat> that the entire continent of Europe yeah. is passing or passed a law that it is now illegal for you to do transactions over $10,000. Yeah. And 
illegal for you to do transactions over six hundred dollars for a certain specific instance i forget exactly what but it's also illegal for you to have ownership of your own custodial wallet yeah now so i've got some friends i need to talk to about what they're going to end up doing because almost all y'all are over there in the zero 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 utc zone so yeah yeah he's 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 a fun fact um there's not too many people that and not too many things i can say i'm I'm an expert in but i'm actually i'm actually a qualified expert in aml and um anti-terrorist financing um i had to go through all the courses because i've got a finance background in the from the car industry so you know international privacy act the whole lot yeah so i actually i could see that like you know amounts over ten thousand dollars had to be reported like especially you know i was mainly working in australia um anything over ten thousand dollars even uh, multiple transactions of nine thousand nine hundred had to be reported as suspicious activity and all that sort of stuff uh, but they've just gone to the next level with uh with in the eu uh, i've got the article open in front of me actually um, they're saying that in a recent regula- regulatory de- development, the European Union has voted to ban cryptocurrency payments to hosted wallets uh, using unidentified self-custody crypto wallets. This decision is part of a set of new anti-money la- laundering laws, AML, uh, in the continent. Um, so it basically goes on to say, as you, as you correctly said, um, on the ca- here we go, the cash payments. So, um, in particular, the new anti-money laundering law prohibits certain thresholds for cash payments and uh, any anonymous crypto payments. So, they're actually rolling crypto into the AML side of things for the significant cash transaction. Um, on that note, any cash payment above €10,000 will become illegal, uh, while also anonymous cash payments above €3,000 um, will also be illegal. Um so, so I, I always knew at the outset when they were bringing in these. Oh, it's really it's a large amount. It won't really affect anyone. You know, not not many people, you know, spend more than ten thousand euros in cash. You know, it's really just to catch the criminals, uh, like like the usual party line is. Um, but then, what once they have it, the into the AML law, then they can basically just uh, create a bill um, to to just re- reduce those limits over time. <laughs> So they can squeeze out um, cash payments because um, the EU, a Lagarde, has come out and said, uh, "You'll have the CBDC and you'll have cash. You'll have the choice. You can choose anything you want." You know. And now, when you see this this legislation laid on top, and you know that the 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 the, the margins, like the ten thousand and three thousand, can come down. You know, so they can move that at any time they want. Now they've got the lever. Because they've already got the actual precedent through with the legislation to to, to make it so that you know, and obviously inflation's going going nuts worldwide. So even if they don't bring it down, like you know, uh, you know, a three thousand uh, euro transaction in cash, um, it won't be that much money in sort of you know two years time, three years time, you know. Um, but um, yeah, interesting. It should be more like. Uh, back in the day, it was it, it was like uh, even more than that, right? In a time when people didn't even have that ca- type of cash. Now, ten yeah. grand—that's fucking nothing. Uh, here's the funny thing that I see about this being a, a predominantly a, a tech understanding is that all you need. Okay, so check this out. If I knew that this shit's coming, and let's say that they were trying to set up precedents to try to establish those means across further than just the continent of, the, of Europe, mm-hmm. even the people that are in Europe right now, all they need to do is become a validator, spin up their own node, and they can process their own fucking transactions whenever the hell they want. Or mm-hmm. you just got to know somebody who has a node. 
and they'll mm-hmm. they'll process your transactions. Fuck the government. They won't stop. They can't. There's like no us. possible yeah. way that they could stop us from doing any of this stuff. And it's just fear mongering. But I don't think anybody yeah. has the balls to come out and like be say what I just said exactly. I guess you know yeah, because yeah. that because if I if I go around telling everybody that shit, then I will probably be pinpointed in some sort of fucking stupid way that I would rather not. But. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I made the comment in uh, in my group um, that just in regards to, to, to this is that like um, you know they can they can they can do this or that, but um, but when it when it comes down to it, and and this, the, the, we're seeing all these central centralized exchanges uh, launching their own chains, like you know Coinbase now has Base, uh, OKX now has X One coming, you know. So and so has so and so. So so all the all the centralized uh, exchange players are actually expanding their decentralized um, uh, 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 blockchains and networks because they can probably see the writings on the wall. And this is the, what I've, I've I mentioned to, to someone today is that, is that we've seen it coming for a while uh, from the start, and that is that we're supposed to be we're supposed to be transacting peer to peer. Do crypto to crypto, what you know? What once you can get yourself into into crypto from fiat, well, this is this is the new economy, you know. Like so, this is how we will tr- transact. And I think, you know, uh, apart from banning banning the the, the fiat to, to on ramp on ramps and off ramps, which is exactly where they're putting all the pressure. Um, case in point, you know, the troubles that um, you know uh, Coast's um, banking partner. Probably got put put on them to, to pull pull out or whatever happened. It it'll be some other thing with someone else. And you know, I, I went through I went through all this sort of pressure in twenty seventeen. Um, there was a really major 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 crypto card, and there was a few other ones around. And um, I think the card issuer was uh, Visa in Gibraltar, I think. And they basically, the governments of the world, whoever, they all, they all worked out, oh, there's one card issuer in that jurisdiction that was able to issue those cards, and everyone was using it to convert their, their, their crypto to, to fiat and pay it, uh, you know, for all their purchases. So they went and targeted that one card issuer in Gibraltar and just put them out of business, you know, and all of a sudden, overnight, you know, I, I think I just moved to Mexico at that time. And uh, I thought, oh shit! I, I've had to go back through my normal exchange, in, uh, you know, in Melbourne, you know, and uh, go back to my normal bank account to get my to be able to spend my crypto in Mexico. And uh, I was like, Phew. I, for a minute there, I was like, whoa! They they cancelled all crypto cards. <laughs> so, uh, and it's just at that point where they do it too. They know exactly where to put pressure. And our an- our answer to the, to all this is. Um, you know, get in, get your, make it, make your money in the crypto, and then basically stay in. <laughs> you know, everyone talks about cashing out. It's like, yeah, you can cash out. And it's, it's a USD inside crypto. There's this. This is the new system. I, this, and that's my opinion, anyway. But uh, um, what do you? What do you? Well, what are your then, thoughts? Well, okay. So as as more and more people are being involved in crypto, could you imagine the day that the card shut off and you're like, well, I remember my twelve word seed phrase, and you you. You go and go to the computer at the shop that you're at and pull up your wallet and say, hey, you have a a wallet address that I could just pay you via crypto. And Mm -hmm. that is actually more and more capable every day that passes, that more and more people are getting access to it. And the more complicated Mm -hmm. that they make it for people to get in and out, there's some people that aren't in yet that will go beyond all means to get in. Like, yeah. I know a mattress company here locally that was accepting crypto, certain types of crypto, like Hex mm-hmm. and shit like this, uh, wow. you get discounts and stuff like that on their, on your mattresses and furniture wow. and all sorts of other shit like this. And it blew me away. And that's kind of awesome. how I found some of the, the sharks and stuff that are in Hex <laughs> in my local <laughs> town. I'm like, you guys own all these businesses? And they're like, fuck yeah, and we're doing all this stuff. And they own, like, golf courses and all the ATM machines and the entire state. And, like, these guys are big in, like, the real world, like, in that respect, yeah. right? And they couldn't figure it out how to get in, in in the type of way that they wanted because, you know, liquidity can be particularly controlled by certain entities, right? Yeah, yeah. So then you really need to learn that ecosystem and the liquidity and, and how to move in and out and what the tools are and things like this, which we come across V3 from Uniswap. And then the, the, 
potential um, on top of, you know, real world stuff is uh, interchain interoperability. Yeah. So like you alluded to with SparkSwap, right? Them yeah. getting yeah. involved with those types of things. As soon as that stuff is more prevalent and starts to exist and more and more people start to hear about those things, the traveling between the chains is going to be even easier, meaning that if I was to ask a shop owner, hey, about this wallet thing, then it wouldn't matter what network that they have it on. If I send it to them, all they yep. need is the RPC. They get the RPC, bingo, bingo, yep. they got their money, they're fucking happy, I got my shit, I move along the way. No, I wouldn't even pay fucking taxes at that point because I don't think that there's a way to do it, right, at that yep. point. Yep. So, I mean, they'd have to figure out a whole, they're going to waste a lot of time trying to figure out how to dominate how we pick and choose to interact with the real world. <laughs> and it's not gonna help them to try to obfuscate the ways that get in and out or try to stop those ways from being uh available in in and of itself altogether yeah. um because we'll just find another way and if it has to rely on us i mean i could i could build a house i could do plumbing i could do this i could do all sorts of shit and if you've got crypto i'll accept it right and i don't give a shit right uh, if yep. you grow fruit and I build you a chair and then we just trade back and forth or some shit like this, it's no different than that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't Maybe we go back to the old ways. I don't think that the new kids will quite understand it, but, but honestly, the new kids will probably be the ones that actually figure out the way that works the best. Well, I, I reckon it's the younger, younger generation that, that are more, that they're more cyberpunk than um than what we've seen in recent years when the the early early adoption of of crypto was coming in it was like people were like passionate and uh on the tour network and all this sort of stuff and they're, they're working out oh we can get around this you know we can we can download files you know we can torrent files and all that sort of stuff you know the the, the more the more um uh, the, the more we get pressure points put on there's certain well, I'm very much like this, is that, no, 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 I'll, I'll say how I'm going to do stuff, uh, and, like, you know, if you're going to have technical, like, the government's going to beat us with technology, I don't think so. So, it's the will of, of the individual, and uh, collectively, I think, um, and especially the, 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 the younger people uh, that, are, that are faced with, um, you know, the, the house prices we've got and stuff like that, you know, looking at their future, they're going, fuck this, I'm going to go, <laughs> what was that chain, Solana? What, which meme coin's good today? And they're, 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 they're rolling, rolling the dice, and some of them are going to hit it, you know, so, um, because, um, you know, all, all the cost of cost of living and stuff like that is, is crazy. But I think, I think um, where there's a will, there's a way, and, and the more, pre uh, 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 you know, pressure they put on the points of, of you know, uh, on ramps and off ramps is it, all you need is one on ramp and off ramp somewhere in some coin and i think what you're saying what you're alluding to there is about re regarding interoperability uh, and I, I happen to know like apart from the solutions that you know spark swap are doing between all these different chains um you know there, there's a layer one x which is a, a blockchain that's releasing on the on the, the second of april it's been in in, uh, in the works for four years, I think, from the time it was first accepted. That's going to connect seven, eight, nine chains um, and without a bridge. Um, transactions are done in 20 seconds. Um, so that's all coming too. So if all the chains are connected and there's only one fiat on-ramp, off-ramp anywhere in the world, um, you've got access to, to, to crypto and any crypto you want and you can go play in any market, any meme, <laughs> any pro protocol you want. Uh, that that's already that's already basically here, um, and it's and the, the, all the efforts and I can see all the investment happening in, in the in the decentralized stuff because it's a par it's a parallel system to the legacy system, you know, and there's some problems over there, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> there's some problems. It's becoming yeah, self-evident. I mean, I I know that the stock market hit all time highs and gold is going up and silver's dragging one along with it in a good way. Um, but I mean, they if you look at the charts of everything all together, it it does look like the old 
uh, fallbacks to safety are just as strong as they ever were because they're the like the dominant uh, flat line right they don't go up they don't go down they may move a little bit but they pretty much stay exactly where they're supposed to be at all the time and I don't know if you're if you're actually beating inflation in that respect when it comes to gold and, and silver you, yep. you're, you 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 might have been if you had been in it for many 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 years but if you're recently getting into it uh, it's, it's a tough battle I'm sure well just like anything else just like crypto or anything else you're investing in I mean, it's it's, it's got to be a psychological struggle I mean not for us we're already fucking here <laughs> so it's <a> different <laughs> for us we just kind of ride the waves you know I don't, I don't know some, some days it is a bit of a psychological struggle it's <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. Going, going, going through the cycles you know navigating your way through the cycles but um, that's, yeah so true um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's not without its challenges, but, um, there, 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 there's some, uh, this is why I like, you know, when you're referring to things that were st- are stable, you're talking about certain cryptos that are, that remain stable. Is that what you meant? Well, I meant like, uh, <clears throat> if you look like the history of gold and silver itself as yeah. compared, as compared to, I, I think it's, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Gary, uh, Funding Jim, posted it, uh, I don't know, yesterday or maybe even today. It was, I think in 2001 or some shit, he put like a million dollars into Bitcoin, into Solana, into Hex, E-Hex, wow. gold, silver, some shit like this, right? Like, and, and then the s and uh, so there's like six or seven data sets that he had and mm-hmm. the ones that stayed like flatlined throughout that whole entire time was gold and silver. So like the money that the million dollars that you put in was still pretty much a million dollars today, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I don't even want to get into the performance of the other ones cause we're all in part of the rest of all that. But yeah. It, it was the stability that like the first thing that I saw out of all of the volatility of the other stuff was guaranteed flight to safety. If you thought your ass was going to be hauled out, then you better be getting into those things because that's that's a concrete floor foundation there. They would call it an uh, insurance policy. Yeah, I mean, for very for 40, 50 years, you know, like that's pretty good, <laughs> pretty good data set, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's t- well, technically well, shit on it, right? Like, I get it, I get it, but yeah. whatever. Technically speaking, um, it was stable. It was actually going, going down in value, and it wasn't actually beating the the hurdle weight of inflation, um, so, because they've been, uh, you know, some, a lot of the, you know, Gather and a few of those organisations have, have been talking about it for years. You know, uh, JP Morgan, the silver, uh, those 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 spot spot markets. You know, those um, they they're able to push the the price around to exactly where they want it, and and historically, gold and silver has always been like the canary in the coal mine of alerting uh, people to inflation in the economy. So if they can sort of make it say stay stable, they could pretend like the, the US dollar is not losing value. Um, but now, um, I think the genies are out of the bottle with, with crypto and the stock market. So, you know, we're, we're, we're in, in, in two markets, major markets, we're, we're hitting all-time highs. So, and I don't think it's going to be slowing down. Um, with all, like with all the, the, the Fed uh, talk during the week, um, I mean, I never listen to too much about the forward forecasting because I just I just look at current price performance and adjust myself accordingly uh, with the long term trend. So whatever happens, I'm not trying to predict the future. But um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of money printing, uh, and uh, it's it's going into crypto and the stock market, stock market. Um, so it, and and now. They can do whatever they want to the gold and silver price as far as manipulating the mar- that market, um, and you know, make it make it uh, shorting, you know, um, sh- shorting the silver market with, uh, you know, uh, silver they don't actually own and all that sort of stuff. They can do that all they want, um, but it's now actually showing up in the gold and silver market too. So, because I've got a copy costing of a, a fortune, 
Uh, that's so confusing for me. That that gold, the gold and silver market. That when you're extracting gold and silver out of the ground, but yet telling the public that there's not enough of it. When, I mean, okay, back when I was younger, I was a geologist, right? Yeah. Like I was in my twenties, I was a geologist for a company called Halliburton at the time, and uh, mm -hmm. Dick, Dick Cheney was the vice president, and he was he's the head. He owns that company. Yeah, and. I come to a great understanding um, at that point in time how there's a lot of gold, dude. There is a lot of there is more gold than you yeah. would actually imagine, and so they they even though if you watch USDT and you see the massive amounts of billions of dollars being printed coming into crypto, um. I see. I hear what you're saying about the manipulation of of gold and silver, but I don't see it being any different than what it already had been anyway. Yeah, it's been going on for a long time since the seventies. Yeah. Since the seventies, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dex, yeah. Dex, Dex, you want to jump in, man? How are, how are you, brother? Yeah, good, mate. Sorry, I uh, slept slept past the clock. Um, yeah. yeah I, I, I wanted to ask you guys a question. I don't know if you've spoken about it, but um, did you see... Now, I don't, uh, this is unconfirmed from my end, but um, did you see that it's now illegal to make any uh, movements in Europe with uh, cryptocurrency, anything over 10 grand? Yeah, um, yeah. The, the, we, we were having a chat about it. Um, the, the, sto the story's only been picked up by finbold.com um, that I can see so far. Um, but it does fall in line with what they were basically trying to plan. Um, uh, if I, I'll, I'll try and EU bans anonymous crypto. I'll try, I'll try and search, search, search the, the subject and see if any other than major newspapers have picked it up. You know, you always look at one, one article, but it, it sounds like the yeah, coin telegraph has picked it up. Um, so what date? This is ten hours ago. Okay, yeah. EU co uh, committees approved ban on anonymous crypto transaction via, via hosted wallets. So, so they're gonna they're gonna put um, pressure on the institutions to say, you know, what's your source of funds, all that sort of stuff. If you want to get back into fiat, so they're basically, uh, if you're on crypto, they're, they're they're closing the door behind you or trying to, um, because and they want to. It's it's a bit of a, a bit of a fear tactic, really, when you think about it, because. If people want to jump in, they're going to think, "Hang on, wait a minute. If I get in there, how do I get how do I get out?" It's just an, another level of like, um, you know, fun for the new user. Really, when you think about it, that's where I think it's going to affect us the most. I mean, the people that are in crypto have probably been in for a while. If they've been in for a while, they've worked out how to make extra crypto and make make money in crypto and uh, multiply their coin count. Um, so we could we could build our way into the new economy, you know, but. Um, this this all comes in probably. I think it's slated to come in within three years, but they, they're warning that it might come in sooner. Um, but yeah, also uh, cash transactions um, um, under three grand, uh, over three grand could be illegal, and over ten grand is definitely illegal. Is basically what the wrap up of that news was. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's hilarious though. It's like, okay, hey guys, you can't. Um your money is not your money. Your, your money is our money. That's yeah. what that is. It's, uh, it's, I, look, a, I, it's a funnel. It's, a, it's funneling you, you into their system. And what I think it is from my end is that, um, particularly in Australia, they're trying to cut out, uh, you know, uh, exchanges. So they yeah. want to be exchanged, the middleman between you and crypto and you not having a uh, digital wallet so basically they won't allow you to transfer off the platform once you, yeah. once you're in there it's just going to be purely uh speculative um mm -hmm. that's the way it seems to be headed but um but anybody anybody in the crowd come up and join us and and chat chat to us about it if you're in europe um what do you think about this yeah, anyone in Europe, just um, just any or anyone, just re request the, the the mic, and I'll bring it up as a speaker. Got plenty of spots. It's only a small group today, so it's pretty cash. Um, but yeah, the implications of all this, like um, 
they think through this this stuff. There's like think tanks that work this shit out. Okay, now it's time to move this this chess piece, you know, sort of thing. And it's it's a sl- it's a slow march to- towards what they they ideally want. But um, yeah, we're 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 building. We've been building for a long time towards having this decentralized trustless system, and it's gonna it's got it's gonna survive alongside. The only thing is they can they can demonize um, our holdings, you know, as far as having that the ability to, to cross back over. But that's that's going to drive adoption for peer to peer crypto. Like like businesses will, it, it's it's almost stupid from because it's going to accelerate the, the pace at which merchants uh, adopt crypto. I think because you know if I can. You know, if, if, if I can get my local businesses, like I've got people in my local economy, I've got farmers, hairdressers, mechanics, um, I've got a chiropractor made of mine, uh, I, and I, I've already got them into crypto, uh, or they're already half in crypto or already in crypto, but those are all their professions. So uh, I've got a small um, small mixed business that, that, that for groceries that takes crypto, and I can just go up to the owner and say, hey, you know, can I just pay you in, you know, BNB coin or Pulse coin or whatever? And he'll say, yeah. So I've got access to food. I've got access to, to, to a farmer. Um, I, can, I can service my car, um, you know. So I've got food, water, <laughs> my car serviced. I can get my, 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 my bar- barber as well. So there's a few things just in my local economy there. Uh, chiropractor. <laughs> so, I mean, most people could go out and sort of make make those relationships. And I go to local crypto meetups. I think that's a that's a, a great way to make some connections. I've made some really good good new friends actually in the last three four months. I've started to go um, just here in Christchurch, and um, I've made some really really good friends and um, and some really good contacts. Um, and um, there's, there's 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 communities out there where. You know, you can you can do while we still have cash. There's like like you know, ca- uh, ca- cash for cash for crypto uh, discords that operate in local local economies. You, you can usually find. Um, you know, they might have some sort of mechanism there uh, where uh, it's a smart contract. You, you put your, your your crypto in, it goes to the receiver. You meet. You know, you you either transfer money from bank, your bank accounts. Or, or you could transfer your CBDCs when it comes to that, um, or whatever we're using at the time. But value for value, but uh, all in cryptocurrency. So there's always a way. That there's not, there's ten ways to skin a cat, and um, you know how far we have to go into those solutions. Um, I think people will just double down. I think people will just get more robust uh, in their knowledge just through necessity. But uh, there's going to be two systems. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, the one okay, the one thing that worries me a little bit is we know the powers that those centralized exchanges hold, and the lack of responsibility that was that was upheld with the the private the private groups that had those centralized exchanges. Mm-hmm. Now they're getting backing from the government directly for those centralized exchanges, forcing people to go into harm's way potentially, and it it, it would be bothersome if we knew that the governments knew that that's what they were doing but it seems like even if they didn't know or if they did know it's kind of irrelevant because now doesn't it seem like they're accepting the responsibility with those entities of the centralized exchanges that they're going to do the fiduciary type of situation with the responsibilities of making sure that people don't get harmed just like what they're saying yeah. But yet, what happens when that centralized exchange happens to have a massive amount of volatility that happens to it, and they, the button doesn't work? Yeah. When you click the button and a window pops up, and it says, da-da-da-da-da, about we're experiencing some sort of thing on the front end that we need to work through, the oh, developer, nice. yes, the developer that runs the front end had to go make the fucking button stop in the first place to put the window up. There was no unexpected thing. They just Mm. made the button stop working because of the volatility in the market. So that way they could run their nodes and still process their own transactions. And then you are harmed in those movements 
or maybe so, even it, 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 it binds up your transaction so it just takes hours and hours and hours for it to get through. And the button Robin, does work. I'm thinking Robin Hood. All mm-hmm. that stuff for GameStop. Yes. And like you said, there'd be two separate communities. And it would it it, it just sucks to to know that this is what the reaction will be. But as mm-hmm. soon as all those swaths of people are getting harmed by those types of exchanges during those periods of time, the community over here, us, are going to maybe potentially harm ourselves by mm-hmm. doing the I told you so thing. Right? And yeah. God knows the colorful ways that people can be when they're, t- when they're trying to be not so humble <laughs> when they should be. You know? it, comes ac- it comes across as, yeah, I, I, and, I, and I told you so, can only come across as glib. You know, there's no other way of... <laughs> yeah. You, you, and you, it, you can't, yeah. It, it, but the good thing about it is, is that some people will, will take that to their head and they'll be like, oh shit, these people were right. And then they'll try to figure out how to get involved with our routes that we have, like you were explaining before, that has yeah. happened time and time again when all these things have happened before in different types of ways with the pressure from the government. And then we just kind of go into the dark a little bit and then pop out over in some other whatever the fuck it is that, that was developed at that time. So, yeah. yeah. And it, it could only be good for us no matter how this goes, even if they try to cut our point of exit out, then yeah. we just have an opportunity to build more access to assets that are outperforming the inflation rate. Easy, okay. easy done. Easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, right. a piece of, it's a piece of piece. We've already won. I, I think their efforts are just going to speed up, as I said, adoption, peer-to-peer and merchants. Like, I think it's just going to speed it up. And that's why I'm, I'm just doubting. Are they stupid? I think they are. Like, I know the, the whole, uh, you know, dystopian agendas uh, that they'd, lo- they'd love uh, to have us uh, working in is, is crazy. But um, I think, they, I think they're, they're actually, because we're speeding up, they're doing stuff to try and stop it. And they're actually going to, they're going to speed up awareness and adoption of crypto peer-to-peer, which is the end goal. That's, the, that's, that's, that's our checkmate. You know, like with dealing with the government, like a lot of their officials, their experts that they have or whatever, a lot of it feels the feeling that I get when I hear them talk. It, it really feels to me like they're the kid that just learned something and they want to go tell everybody about it. And when they go tell everybody about it, the real experts like us that know and been here for years, how it's, how it actually works are listening to their commentaries and going, Oh boy, they are so far behind. Like they really don't have this guy's so excited about what he thinks that he knows and how this stuff works. And he, yeah, he is in a way kind of correct, but he's just not really, he's not nailing the point. He's not, there's obvious a lot of substance that he's missing on. He, he just kind of, it seems like somebody came over and gave him the bullet points and he, he got excited over the bullet points and that's, that's all he had. So when other like poignant questions that would have derived more, actual information from the panel that wanted information yeah. from you guys they didn't have anything they just go back to their bullet points and you're just kind of like oh <laughs> man these are the these are the people that they're dealing with like oh my gosh like okay i was so, told to say this yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so like like what you're saying is like yeah it looks like they're making some strides to go forward and they're trying to stop this and that and the other but it's almost kind of like they're they're in a race, but they can't even really touch the person that they're getting towards. And as soon as they get a little bit closer, the person that they were cha- chasing the whole entire time, they find out that it's not the same person that they were chasing in the beginning. And they're like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Identity. I, I thought you were another person. And now they're just standing <laughs> there in the middle of the track wondering where the fuck their pants are. You know, like, what happened here? Yeah. And that's kind of the reason why this whole ecosystem thing was developed in the first place for those types of activities. Nobody wants to, that's the thing. This is the reason why it'll be successful. Nobody that is honest with this ecosystem that really wants to build and do make good things and have other people become community members with the investments of just crypto in itself. Um, anybody that's getting involved with it right now, is going to have 
every opportunity to watch all this stuff get developed. And like what you were saying with this, with the governments seeming like they're there, but they're not, it's because they're not. And we will have all these opportunities to continue, keep doing the same, the same thing, the fundamentals and everything else with all these new people that are going to learn as they're in here and watch these governments do this silly. It's going to seem really silly when they're talking to us and they go, well, well they're saying this other thing is going to happen. And why aren't you guys worried about it? That's what's going to question in their head. Why are we not worried about something that they see as a disaster? And we're like, because it's always been like this, bro. It's always been like this. And these guys that are pushing these narratives in the government and other, other whatever money-backed systems that they have that are pushing narratives all over the place, the reason why they don't see what we're doing and why we're capable of being successful in doing all these things is because they have their own narrative in their head. That's why they don't see it. It yeah. looks like they're fucking dumb, but they're they're not dumb. That's the thing is a lot of them actually really are extremely smart. Some of the best people in their, their class or whatever their technical yeah. background is, but they just don't, they're not a part of the community. They're not trying to build. They're not trying to to get away from what they see, what we call legacy. They, they see yeah. nothing wrong with it. And that's just, just the way that it is and the way the game is played. And, and they're really kind of droned, very intelligent individuals. But unfortunately for them, that is their biggest downfall and their biggest mistake of not being able to, to pop their head out of the box and seeing opportunities that may be passing them, like I was telling you before. Yeah, this, it's not to the academic friends. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I learned something new. Yeah, okay. Hey, look at this. I I read something somewhere. Um, <laughs> if you want, if you want, if you want to see some really highly polished bullshit outside of government or your your locality, is the the World Economic Forum. Uh, I don't know why I'm I'm sadistic. I, I've uh, occasionally I'll, I'll pop up one of their panels, and one of their things they were discussing was, um, um, over tourism right, in certain locations. How do we deal with over-tourism? They're calling illegal immigration over-tourism. They're, they're actually changing the word. And it's like, and they're like ser making serious, actually, like, it sounded like, you know, you know, they were all really serious about it. And I'm thinking, people are like, does, is anyone buying this? I, 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 there, there are some people that do, you know. <laughs> there are some people that do. <laughs> It's crazy, but oh, that's the most polished bullshit I've ever ever heard. Over tourism for uh, illegal immigration, incredible. How do we deal with uh, depopulation type of commentaries that they have in those meetings? Are quite uh, chilling, scary, Be chilling, chilling. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll just pause for a moment. A anyone that wants to just grab, grab a mic and come up and, and speak and uh, get to the conversation. Uh, to, to, it's only a small crowd today. Uh, please uh, feel free. Um, but I want to I want to say a spin off a point of view real quick since you said something mm. about the WEF. Um, <laughs> there's so many people that are really, really afraid of this supposed point um, one percent of the one percent of people that are trying to control everything and murder the world. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I I think. Okay, that's whatever. I don't. I don't have a side. I, I don't really have an opinion on that. I guess right. And then there's like another side that I have thought about myself and have heard very little about. But what if there was nobody that controlled any fucking thing, and it's all actually chaos? The whole fucking thing. Nobody controls nothing. There is I, nobody I, that's actually. I, I actually Shit. Actually, to add to that, because very quickly, not to interrupt you, but there's factions of those really top elite people that are all fighting each other as well. So it's not like everything's agreed upon. <laughs> yeah, so it's just fucking chaos. Yeah, it is. That's, yeah. that's what I think. I mean, I would have more of an opinion on speaking about the conspiracy of that in a fun way, of course. <laughs> uh, you, you know, just, just purely a fun, just let's have a chat about some odd off the wall shit, I guess that would be a fun one to have, I think, as opposed to the, the, the story that everybody hears, which is the almost obvious, right? It just makes me want to think other things that aren't so obvious. Like the reasons why you might want to tell everybody that there is a 
a power that controls all the stuff to give it some sort of structure to try to calm some people down and freak out other people mm. just because you don't want people to know that there's a lot of turmoil at the top between the one percent and it's all yeah. a bunch of fucking chaos and if you were to know one one iota of the dumb shit that happens between those groups we would all lose confidence <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, even even the world. Um, I mean, w when you think about crypto, it's it's all like you know, you, even building smart contracts. It's all about incentive, put it, aligning the right right incentives, and all of a sudden you get this this harmony in a, in a certain direction, be it good, for good or bad. Um, but just one quick look at what's going on in the world with the US dollar, the money printing, and then the the BRICS nations, and the, and then s sanctions, and the, using the financial system as as a mean um, um, a weapon of war you know um it's not everyone's agreed and uh not any one nation is like the whole world you know so um we, we're seeing people break away and then collectively us as a group uh you know being a, a decentralized system that's you know got a, got a network of nodes that's that's completely decentralized that that, that but there's no way that I, I can unring that bell in my head. Like if if they make it difficult for me, I'll find a way, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not alone. I'll find a way because I'm very stubborn. Because uh, if I know I'm on the right side of things, that I just I just want to be left alone. I just want my freedom. You know, I want to keep the fruits of my labour. That's it. That, those are fundamental human rights. Um, and uh, I think I think that me that message is a very clear one. It's as clear as a meme. <laughs> to get up there. Yeah, and I, I guess like in the, the the micro view, it's kind of the same thing. Like even in Pulse Chain, there's like a power struggle between like multiple protocols that are trying to garner the, the attention of the majority of transactions, right? Yeah. And so it's a, it's a big effort and a tug and pull between multiple factions that are all doing this. I think I said this last week. They're all doing the same thing, which is brilliant, in my opinion, is they would be like, I fucking hate you. And the other guy is like, you're a piece of shit. And then they both look at the camera and at the same time they put their thumbs up and they go, yeah, but he hates me and I'm a piece of shit on the greatest network you know, on earth, <laughs> you know I mean? like, and then, and then it's all kumbaya later, right? Like, Oh, wait a minute. Were that, was that like a thing or, or what was going on there? Exactly. Like they hated each other. Now they're fine. And it's like, yeah. Oh, you guys just don't understand how this stuff works. Like there's always a power struggle. And sometimes you don't want everybody to know like the things that are happening in the background Yeah, when you're in, in, in development stages, you know, cause uh, that's yeah. all the time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially uh, like so, uh, uh, some of the founders that are built, building some of the greatest stuff. Uh, they yeah, you know, it, it, it all it all it all takes time, and you know, you you want to be able to, to um you know sort of say this is what we got in the works. Um, but like you can some you can sometimes it can sometimes be sort of um, you know put out in the ether a little bit a little bit earlier, and then, and then and then basically okay, it's like when this when that and then you start got, start getting pested from uh from the, from the community well, meanwhile you, you're diligently working your way you know uh in your, in your dungeon as as we, we uh, say, yeah. as we say <laughs> um and um try, try to make uh the the general population happy uh, about the progress uh yep it'll be ready when it's ready um <laughs> yeah like uh, you know what's funny is sometimes we get together and have chats about the fact that we were actually able to go out and like walk our dogs or literally go touch grass, go on a mile yeah. run or some shit just to get your head cleared or something like that, right? Just because of some of the stuff that we're working on, you also have to be like scouring the blockchain to see yeah. if what you're building doesn't already fucking exist in some sort of yeah. way. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's also a thing, part of the development stage in which you don't really want to release certain things too soon or, or a development path in some sort of way. Because somebody might be watching you when you have no idea you should be watching them, right? Because yeah. they're there to, they're, you know, sometimes code can be built in, okay, so, so let's say that, that 
somebody said, hey, how long is something going to be out, right, after you let everybody know? And you say two weeks, right? And you're honestly, like, in your head, you're like, oh, okay, between between audit and write code and front end and all the stuff, let's say, let's just be, let's say three weeks, right? Between the code, you could probably write that in a day or two, right? And the front end, you could probably write that in another day or two. So now, now you've got, in the very first week of three weeks, you've got pretty much the majority of all of it built, Right. And I'm not talking like it's fancy. Right. You, you quickly threw all this shit together in a week. Yeah. And then you have uh, this one thing about you that you give a shit about its performance. Right. And it's it's, it's uh, yeah. craftsmanship. Yeah. Work. All yeah. Together. Yeah. And so um, then you have to do a lot of testing and that could that testing seriously, in my opinion, should have been the whole three weeks in the first place of the timeline that you had but True. after three weeks and you you've done two weeks of testing that's when you start to get another two weeks another two weeks another two weeks <laughs> another two weeks it'll be another two weeks because another, another 15 million dollars in two years <laughs> right well well in in my uh in my observations of doing it myself um does the extra two weeks is pertinent to make sure that whatever the fuck it is that you said that you need another two weeks for will never happen. And sometimes you have to, you have to do a workaround that also doesn't create the bugs. So you could still have it operate the way that you want it to operate. Otherwise it's just not different than something else. Yeah. So yeah, especially if you're writing new code that's never been written before, you better take your time on it. So if if you do have a protocol that seems technically savvy and they're asking for more time, I would suggest that you do your due diligence and try to do your best to to maintain um, some sort of humbleness inside you for whatever it is that they're doing because it's probably gonna be something that other people will talk about if it is actually different if it's just a copy paste thing and you paid 50 million dollars for it oh boy like okay i don't i couldn't if you paid me 50 million dollars for code i would tell you you needed to wait 10 years because i'd need to give you 50 million dollars worth of shit worth of value <laughs> yeah yeah it's, i'm gonna be working for the rest of my fucking life for you yeah, you know what yeah i mean yeah. Just to give you fifty million dollars worth of shit, like fuck, man, like <laughs> I have to build a whole fucking blockchain, which I mean could be done for fifty million dollars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I'm, not saying that, I'm not saying that in reference to anything else. I am totally no, 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 on no, no, board no. with ninety nine point nine percent of everything Pulse Chain, even the scams create transactions, which are fine, whatever. The, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that the, we want them. I'm just saying sometimes even that activity leaves people. I don't want people to get hurt. Don't, don't yeah. misinterpret what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. it does leave people in the ecosystem in a position where they can get into something. Even even I've done dumbass shit throughout the last seven years that put me in a position that I am today to not make those fucking mistakes again. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't perfect. It was not a perfect okay. road. So the, 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 mean, the, the, the scientific method is, is also about finding what not to do next time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So people are like, and, and you're smart. And be like, no, I just <laughs> fucked up a lot of times, bro. Like, a lot. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how it works. Like, I mean, even if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're trading, you know, like... Uh, you know, get out, get out a, 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 a journal and um, test, test your theory, and go right. This is the rules I'm going to work within. Start doing it, and then within 90 days, you can basically go back and and see where, what ha what happened, what was your total result, what happened, where you where you thought you failed, what you could have done differently, and you can create a nice little rule around that, and then go for another 90 days. Um, as long as you've got enough, an enough a, a big enough sample set. Uh, but there, there you go. There's, a, there's like uh, just developing a tra trading uh, rules for yourself. Um, I go in blocks of 90 days because you don't have enough of a data set to 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 actually make it worthwhile to change. You know, um, unless you have that much time. So yeah. So I really am uh, empathetic to to the the devs actually doing the work because they've got a and 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 they're creating stuff from the ground up, like. As you say, uh, they're not just like you know copying existing code. They're, they're building from the ground up. I, I have a lot of empathy um, 
especially when it comes to time frames. <laughs> especially Definitely. on Pulse Chain, because Pulse Chain still has infrastructure uh, that mm. needs to be completed. So it's it's a lot of workarounds. It's like when we when you want to develop on a network that that is still in development stages, like you have to be dedicated. Like the reason why you want it to be on this network is because you absolutely want it to be on this network. Like you are going to beat your fucking head against the wall to make it work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do, it, do whatever it takes. Wear the same t-shirt for four days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't, I'm not aware all the time as to when the sun is up. <laughs> <laughs> It's like walking into a casino. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is. Oh, jeez. Uh, hey, hey, is that Ty? How are you, Ty? GM, GOG, everybody. How is everyone doing today? Yeah, good, man. How are you? Like, I, I saw you were in another space, and we sort of, like, uh, went on at the same time, but uh, uh, no. Good I didn't realize you, this was running, so when I saw it, I... Uh, you immediately, you immediately dumped the other one and came in here. Uh, no, I appreciate yeah, that, brother. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I don't know why um, I didn't see it. No, nah, that's, that's all right. Um, no, it's been a good from a conversation. We've, we've, covered, we've covered off the new European changes in the, in, the, in the laws to ban anonymous crypto transactions via hosted wallets. Um, we went into a little bit of that. Um, just talking about, you know, Richard's latest tweets. Um, just regarding... Do we need centralized exchanges? Can we get along without them? You know, all that sort of stuff. Um, actually, I had a question for you. Um, I think I saw a recent post that you did, and it was uh, staking loan in liquid loan versus barista. Yeah. Would you, would you be able to sort of explain what you meant by that? Well, yeah, it's... Um, <clears throat> so we, we did two posts about understanding... Barista and understanding the stability pool and the staking pool. So, with the staking pool, which is where you stake the loan token, it um it makes no sense to do that on liquid loans because we mm -hmm. pass through a hundred percent of the rewards from liquid loans. So you get all the rewards you would normally get in liquid loans for staking, um, as well as your earned bean um, yeah. for free yeah. for for doing it in Barista instead of liquid loans. Um, and Liquid and Loans actually enough. covered it, you know, we, we went on there, I think we are the only, first third party team to go on their YouTube and then Morris also did a couple of short clips and, a, and, a, and Liquid Loans did a blog on um, staking loan in Barista instead of Liquid Loans, right. so um, it was good to get that uh, support from those guys, but yeah, so yeah. the stability pool isn't binary, I think... Um, the staking pool is because you get everything plus being, but the stability pool really comes down to the individual, uh, what they're trying to achieve. So yeah, yeah. if they were looking to get more exposure to pulse, uh, like, a, like say they don't have a lot of pulse and that their primary goal for providing stability is to DCA into pulse, mm -hmm. then you would be a hundred percent in liquid loans. And the yeah. opposite of that is, if you've got a big stack of pulse and you're looking just to, to uh, slowly stack up your stable coins, then you'd be 100% in Barista. Now, if you wanted a hedge, you could put a percentage in both. So you got exposure to stable coin growth and um, and pulse. So, yeah, yeah. it's not, not binary for the stability pool. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so really, um, and this is probably why Liquid Loans has sort of um, uh, brought you guys into the conversation as far as, yeah, like there's, there's it's all complementary. Like uh, if you're going to be in the stability pool anyway, uh, using using Barista, you're just getting the extra token and the same advantages of, of doing it through Liquid Loans anyway. Yeah, that's the staking pool. So that's for the loan staking. Oh, sorry, not, not for the stability pool, sorry. The, yeah. the loan staking, the loan staking yeah. pool, sorry, yeah. I'm yeah. That up. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we wanted to yeah. incentivize that because we feel like uh, the stability pool is already incentivized for people who, yeah. who are trying to uh, win the arbitrages on the liquidations because the rebalance will um, rebalance it with USDL uh, with the discounted pulse. So you generally, the uh, stability providers could get anywhere from a couple of percent and as high as like eight and a half, nine percent on the arbitrage. Yeah. Um, there was a liquidation the other day. I think we did like a hundred million pulse got rebalanced in a few minutes. 
that's not small small amounts. <laughs> hey, well, yeah, it was that was just one liquidation. So, um, and it, and it, and it also the fees. That's the only fee we have on the entire DAP is the rebalance. Yeah. So it only only takes a fee of one percent when it rebalances, and it only rebalances if it's going to make a profit. Uh, for the for the users, for the stability providers, and then that fee, one hundred percent of that fee goes to the MCR stakers. Yeah, sweet, sweet. I've got, I must I must admit I'll I'll, I'll be honest. I'll, I've got to get in and have a play. Um, I'll, 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 between now and next week, I, I promise I will I will go in there and and, and uh, check it out. Sure, because yeah, I mean it's still on testnet too, so you can play on testnet. It's just it is a bit of a struggle on testnet because it's not real prices. So oh, yeah, um, yeah. there's no financial incentive for this to, the stable coin to be at a dollar, so it's all over the place. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no cash. so we had to, like, in testing, we had to force, you know, by buying and selling on the open market and force prices to force liquidations and that sort of thing so we could test our stuff. It's, um, it's, like, it's, like, it's like playing a, a game of poker with, with chips and there's no buy-in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was we interesting. Definitely. <laughs> um, what what uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I got you, Ty. Um, um, there's been a few conversations about block block explorers for for, for Pulse. Um, do you see there's a there's a desperate need, or do you see it getting better? Uh, do you see uh, things in the works that are that are going to work towards improving that? Is, yeah, well, I mean, who knows whether they're going to improve the official one? I mean, maybe they will. Um, there's other ones that are around as well, but they all seem to have pros and cons, right? There's not one one to rule them all yet. Um, and I know there is talk uh, about, like, you know, um, trying to fund one and, and have a community-based one that is, is awesome, but, yeah, I'm not, I'm not involved in that. But it's definitely needed. Yeah. We definitely need uh, a really good explorer. It's the only really thing that's... Missing from the, you know, from, from from the official channels anyway. I think if they had a really good explorer, it would um, yeah probably make things a little easier. I think I think that's getting getting through in the in the responses to Richard's tweets and stuff like that. A few people have been bringing it up, um, so it's you know he's he's seeing it. So if it's from that that dev team, and uh, I should probably have the bridge do a multi chain as well, not just Ethereum. Yes, yes. Actually, it was, didn't that come up? Someone said? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it was that luck. Would, yeah, yeah. That would be absolutely awesome. Yeah, um, I mean, I know there's other bridges around, but I'm, obviously we know them because we're in the community, but from the outside, yeah. if that's like the first port of call, that bridge, it, it would be good to offer multiple chains. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's it's coming off the official site. Uh, it's the yeah. first thing people see, and it, the more usable it is, and it works. Then you know, once they're in the community, yeah. it doesn't really matter if you want to. Um, then if you find out and move in our circles and find out, oh, this this bridge is pretty good for this or this chain to this chain. You know, you're going to find out eventually. But let's just get you in. Yeah, <laughs> that's the. I noticed what like they've done on the on the homepage now. Is it it. Uh... Actually, maybe it's not on the homepage. Where did I see it? I thought it was on the homepage of the bridge, but maybe it's on the... Um, it's on one of the official pages. I think they put a link to to Token Express, which is the Binance one. Binance and get, Pulse Chain. To get some Binance and Pulse Chain, yeah. 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 Um, I'm just looking can, myself while... I can't remember where I saw it. I thought it was on the... the Pulse chain bridge, but maybe it was on another. Maybe um, it was on another. Um, yes, yeah, to Token Express is on the the bridge page down the bottom. Is? Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe I need to refresh. Hang on, let me see. <clears throat> yeah, see, I don't, I don't have it. Are you on one point seven? Um, what? Yeah. V V one oh seven yeah uh, it's uh, bridge dot pulse chain dot com. I'm on the PC though. Bridge dot ah, uh, so I'm on the IPFS one. Uh, oh yeah, you got you got the app installed. The the XCAM. No, no, I'm just running the IPFS link, so it's not on the IPFS link. Interesting enough. 
Oh, it's on the the, 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 the first page. Right. So that might be an oversight for them, but um, yeah, it'd be good to have you know multiple bridge options or chain options from the main site would be cool. Yeah, I can see uh, Token Express. I just brought it up. Yeah, from Binance Chain, Ethereum, Pulse. Yeah. Cool. Do you know? Do you know if Token Express um, will preload? Have they got a, like a smart contract that'll preload some PLS prior to you sw swapping in or anything like that? Or um, I had a quick look a long time ago. I think they've got pools on both sides of the chain, so it's heavily relied on um, yep. the depth of the pools and people providing that liquidity. Yeah. So yeah. They have like um, they have a wrapped version of. Um, B and B, I believe, and so it's uh -huh. paired with Pulse, and that's on both sides. But okay. I know a while back there wasn't a lot of liquidity, so that needed to probably be bootstrapped to make it make sense. So you know, yeah, yeah, to yeah. come to too much slippage. Yeah, um, I mean, I've used uh, Pulse LM, but I know that's not for everyone as well because I think not in the states you can't use it, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, because I've used them before. They're, they're pretty good. They've been, they've been on spoken to me, um, but fast, um, pretty fast um, bridging as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's super fast. Like, you go back to your wallet and it's already there. And I noticed that, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. I, I noticed that um, I, 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 I think I was on, a, one, I think it was Piteous or something like that, and I noticed it showed up that I had some PLN token in my wallet. Right. Um, which they've obviously just credited to me, but um, and, the, and the more the more tokens you have, the, the bigger the discount you get off the swap. I thought that was that was interesting. Yeah, I think you might have to readjust it. Um, I know I spoke to them last month about it because when they they've got like I, I want to say there's like ten tiers if you go on their docks with the yeah, fee structure. Right. Um, and when they first did that though, the PLM price was significantly lower. So now some of those are not that achievable. Yeah. Um, so he might have to like um, adjust his tiers. I think they were looking at doing that. I don't know whether he's done it yet. I haven't had a chance to catch up with him for a while. I, I think I think uh, on the existing table that I saw that like I think ten LN, which I I, uh, uh, I think is what I've got, um, it gives about five percent discount on the swap, and then one million. That'd be <laughs> there. That must be point oh five. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah because oh. the because the base fee is two and a half percent, and if you're fully, if you've got the best rate, I think you get fifty percent off. Yeah, oh, no, maybe it is five. Per, yeah, sorry, maybe it is five percent. Five percent off the fee. Yeah, of no, you're the right. fee. Yeah, yes. of the fee. And yeah. then the top tier is fifty percent, so you reduce it to one point two five. But that top tier, because of the price rise over the last you know six months, is quite expensive now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, and I, 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 I was uh, speaking to Hexecutioner, but um, is, it, is there any news around the, the traps on, on, on Coast and how they're going with their uh, uh, I think I, saw, uh, I, was, I haven't spoken for a little bit, but I, they seem like they're getting closer to some. They just, I mean, they wrote that they signed a whole lot of documents and, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure they'll sort it out. Those guys are... Yeah, obviously dealing with TradFi is just ridiculously <laughs> bureaucratic, right? And um, but those yeah. guys are like very in tune with that, you know. And they're lawyers; so they have a you know they're a company yeah. with a building in the states. Like they're you know yeah. they're um they're one hundred percent by the book. So uh, yeah, they're definitely going to have some challenges with the legal legal aids. But um, I'm pretty yeah. confident that they'll win over time. So here's the here's the million dollar question of the moment. Uh, everyone else is pretty much <laughs> chimed in on it. Uh, so so how's your, how's your meme coin stacks going, mate? You, you, are you stacking up the, the meme coins? Meme coins? Yeah, yeah. Have you been stuck uh, them or? Not not overly. We've been super busy. So I mean, we've been. I'm stacking Beam. Yeah. Um, which technically is a. Um, it is a meme. It's like a. Uh, Utility meme coin. So right it's now, a, it's a meme. yeah, right yeah, now it's a meme coin, but um, it does have some uh, future use cases coming out uh, with some of our other DAP rollouts. Oh, um, yeah, cool, cool. 
it'll be, so, it'll be, you'll be, you'll be, you've, you've got the incentive to in, include it in in your plans uh, for future releases. So that that, that yeah. makes total sense. Yeah, and and we just released the Golden Beam NFT, which people who held HOA or Beam at a certain level got to mint it for free. Yeah, um, and now now there's you can now buy it with Pulse, and soon you'll be able to buy that NFT with Beam as well. Um, for a lesser rate, and so that golden bean NFT. Um, I mean, we've been pretty ambiguous with the speech we've used, but it, it does have yeah, yeah. Um, that. Th- think of the, that NFT. Uh, the the person who holds that NFT um, will have access to fee reductions, boosted yields. Uh, yeah, exclusive free mints, a whole range of things, um, yeah. and that and it can be compounded. So, um, so yeah, that NFT is going to be quite interesting in the future when we make a, mm. a future announcement of uh, another DAP we have coming. Cool. Hey, what do you mean when you say it can be compounded? It means if you have more than one NFT, uh, you get it, 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 it amplifies its powers. How does that structure work? Like, is there like you know a cutoff, or how does that work exactly? Oh, it'll it'll be capped in the math. We leave the mathematics to the mental level devs, but yeah, it'll there'll be there'll be a, a, a cap per wallet where it won't matter. Where, you know, like let's say for this conversation, the cap is five, and that gives you the maximum. Then having ten isn't going to change it, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have any numbers on that, or is it? Just- too early to, it's to too, talk about it. Yeah, it's too early. It's too early. Where do you get those? How does that work? Um, we have a we have a page on the so hexaacoin.com forward slash golden bean. We put some posts out. Um, on hey, our, so do you want to do you want to chuck it up in the nest? Um, yeah, I'll see the your links. Fine one. Yeah, I saw those. I was just looking at Sandy Beach's uh, timeline, and she had some pictures of some of them or something on there. Yeah, his. So I'll, put, I'll put this one up because it's got a link. It's got a link in it. I'll just put that one up there. There you go. That should pop away in a second. Um, so yeah, we haven't finalised the like. We're, we're still working through the maths because we've. Got quite a long roadmap with one of the future DAPs, and um, it's going to boost the yield for two years. Um, so yeah, we're just we're just running the numbers, but it, it, there definitely will be some compounding. But there'll definitely yeah. be a ceiling on, you know, like you don't need any more than this. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. I get, I, I personally think once we do come out and disclose what we're doing in the future, which will be a few weeks away. Um, they'll be pretty hot property, and then anyone who's got more than they need will just be able to sell them on the open market. And because they're limited, there's only thirteen sixty nine of them. Okay, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. How many did you just say? Thirteen sixty nine in total. Um, thirteen sixty nine. Is that what yeah, you said? Yeah, one thousand three hundred and sixty nine. Yep. That's yeah, quite two, a bit. Two forty. 245 have already gone. There's 40 for giveaways. So 20 of those will be for people who um, have helped us immensely um, via Twitter, uh, TG rooms like Sandy Beach. She's just been a gun uh, keeping Hex Token informed and their Discord and replying to everyone in our Telegram and then some of the people on Twitter spaces that have hosted us and always promoted us. So we've got a few for giveaways. So that that makes it about 300 going so far. Um, but it only just started yesterday. A big shout out. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Big, big shout out to Sandy Beach. Can I just say you're the hardest working person in crypto. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Ben, I interrupted you. Oh, not a problem. So, okay, so that's where the 300 have gone so far is for like marketing. Uh, no, the first hundred went to HOA holders of sixty nine four twenty. Then one hundred and twenty nine went to free for bean holders that had thirty six million nine three six nine three six. How so much was, was that? It, How much was that at the time that people had to hold? Uh, I think it was like thirty seven dollars if they bought it on the open market. Um, but a lot of people got that for free, right? From either being in Barista or being in MCR, so they didn't so they even got- have to actually buy it. 
Okay, so if you had just thirty-seven dollars of, yeah. of the, the token, damn, bro, what a deal you're giving these people. Yeah, yeah. Um, Good for you, Ty. That's that's wonderful. Thanks, man. You know, we're just trying to uh, some of these things are to just um, give a little future proof and flexibility in the stuff that we do, right? So, yeah, I can I can see what you mean. Why you've been so busy? Oh, man, so busy. it's just building. Yeah. Well, that brings up a, another good question. If I'm logically, you know, understanding this in my head is. So if you needed to have $37 of the token, that means there was only a couple hundred people that had that then, correct? Yeah, well, at the time I ran the script, there was only actually 47 people that qualified um, for all that. But by the time we got to Freemint, um, that must have gone up because um, we minted, both Freemints minted out. Yeah. Well, that seems like there's a lot of meat on the bone for that token, right? If there isn't that many holders, let's just say. So that's interesting. Yeah, I think if you look on, because it's an 1155 with just one um, a, a non-unique ID, so it won't. It doesn't pop like a beatbox right now. Doesn't support. 1155s and either does um, 9 millimeter, but I believe Beatbox is about to roll out their updates, which it will. So right now, Pulse Market and NFT on Pulse um, will show you uh, the amount that's minted and um, the amount of unique holders. So last time I checked, it was like 160 maybe unique holders. So obviously some have more than one. Wait. What's the deal with Satan's Angel? He, he looks like he changed his profile pick. Is that a new one, Satan's Angel? Satan's Angel. He's a badass. Hey, anyone wanted to grab them? Grab the mic. Just uh, just request to speak. To speak. There's plenty of spots. We also, since we last spoke, I don't think. Uh, I brought up either we've um so mcr has the ability the buffet has the ability to like whitelist tokens so we've actually incorporated um our first uh non-fee based token it's a, a reward so hoa so mm -hmm. now mcr stakers are earning hoa on a on a daily basis um and currently uh we're trying to get the community more involved to help um bring more HOA into the collector, which distributes it. But at the moment, it's driven by the team's LP. So the LP fees are buying HOA off the open market and uh, it gets sent to the collector and distributed to the stakers. Um, so that's the supporting the price. Yeah, and one of the guys yeah. sent us like um, a few hundred dollars of pulp, which reflects HOA. So if pulp starts getting traded and arbitraged, um, it'll generate HOA in the collector address, so that'll also drip HOA if that um everyone's holding that token at the moment. No one's really trading it, so it's not really <laughs> reflecting right now. But um, maybe in the, in the yeah, future yeah. will. <laughs> well, you just need the volume, don't you? So yeah, otherwise, otherwise nothing happens. But like you know, it's it's laying in wait, isn't it? So yeah, well, 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 I'm going to look at all, if there's a good if there's a good pulse to find the arbitrary means. To give people the action, and I yeah, think that'd be easy for you, I, Ty. Yeah, I, think, I think Pulp Form is looking at doing that. Like we're, you know, I think yeah. it's his token, and they're, they're reflection boys. We're not, but they just said, "Hey, we're going to donate this to your collector and just let it sit there." Um, which we won't whitelist it, so it will just sit there, and then yeah, yeah potentially in the future can can drip HOA as well. Hey, right. hey, Ty. Oh, sorry, I have to give you. Oh no, yeah, I mean. That's go ahead, Ben. I was just going to back him up on his point because I, I like it. It's, it's uh, if with pulp, if there's a protocol that wants to incentivize pulp that makes the people who have pulp, the holders, right? Because you're saying they're all holding them to get rid of them to go to this other thing. And then pulp has an incentive, vice versa, to go back. 
then people will be pushed, the community will be pushed and pulled between the two, causing more transactional value between them. I'm kind of, we're doing the same thing in our little ecosystem over here too. I might need to, I know about Barista for a while and I know how it works. You start with your, with your foundation and then you build on that. And I see that's what you're doing in your development stage of it. And I commend you for saying anything at all, Ty, that's really nice. Um, Cause we're kind of in the stages of that too. And our ecosystem between me and red squirrel and crypto sloth on what we're doing for the Trinity protocol which is a little bit different. I see you went 11.55, um, but we're taking the ERC uh, 721 standard and doing a little twist to it, like a 404, with actually audited code that makes sense. So uh, I love it. I love listening to this. This is great. Please continue. Yeah, we've, we've tried to be <laughs> as transparent as we can, but at the same time, we don't want to give away everything because we want to like reward the people who... Um, believe in what we're trying to do and and uh, and support early on. Um, you know, if you just give away all the secret sauce at the start, then you're trying to like sell it to everyone and get them in, and yeah. that doesn't really benefit the people who have been with you from the start. So that's right. Just sort of drip it out over time. So check this out. I don't know of any other NFT that's done this, but my collection itself, when you mint, you have an option. So you could just mint it and just have an NFT that whatever benefits come with it, you know, without any expectations, of course, but pretty standard, right? Uh, it's connected to Tetra and the, the uh, Stratus protocol. So I'll also be able to whitelist addresses to be able to connect them through all sorts of, I could connect literally thousands and thousands and thousands of things to these uh, 620 NFTs that I got and 235 have been minted out in like the last what week and a half, two weeks, two through two weeks. And, uh, it's doing really well. And That's there's good. an option when you mint, it's the only one that I know of that when you mint, you can, uh, choose a higher price and mint the royalties to your address. So as soon as you mint that sucker, you go put it on to the marketplace and sell it get the royalties and if anybody sells it after that for the rest of your entire fucking life the history of as far as blockchain exists that wallet will get the royalties for those nfts forever and you have that option so that's yeah, that's, that's, a, that's pretty list. yeah that's pretty cool yeah yeah that's we're the development for nfts i think that we all thought it was really silly at the like years ago and we just didn't understand it because like we saw rock pictures being sold for millions of dollars and we were like what the fuck is going on <laughs> i was told by a 16 year old at that time that he uses his own ft nfts to create transactions across wallets that he doesn't have connected to his kyc so he can show losses of the money that he has this kid had over a quarter million dollars and he was wash trading nfts back and forth this was years ago and then my light light bulb went off and i was like oh i see the nefarious means of these things and i just kind of stuck my head in the ground at that point well, but, i think that's why the the standard that's been set on pulse chain by and i think it's been led by the 10 gang was have have a 33 percent royalty for the artist and that that um yeah, it pretty much stops people from wash trading. Yeah, yeah, oh, I got like eighteen percent for that type of stuff on mine too. But you could collect that on your own. So, <laughs> uh, so make it a higher percentage is basically safeguarding against that. You know, people just taking advantage of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. Plus, the, yeah, artist, not, deserve, not the all, artist deserves something too, right? But yeah, not all yeah, marketplaces yeah. actually adhere to that. Right, even though you have it in your code, uh, they don't always, you know, give you the grace of those royalties. Which is, is I don't know. I, they, I'm sure they have their their reasons as to why. I just haven't really established my understanding into exactly what those reasons would be. Why the front end would not um, give you those royalties when they're there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they may just try to establish their own their own uh, foundation. And then maybe later they'll establish a fee structure that makes sense or something like that. I don't. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's it's like an, a centralized exchange getting a, a free free copies uh, with a fork. Yeah, or, or some passed it. it some passed know. it on. Some didn't. Remember? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, it's, it's funny you should mention that that, that feature within the NFT because um, you know, earlier on I mentioned um, OKX is releasing the X1 blockchain and the Swap X DEX is coming out. The Swap X DEX token, uh, uh, oh, sorry, the, 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 the raise is done in, in, a, in an NFT sale and that NFT has a, a, a 3% royalty that follows whoever the original um, C investors of the protocol, the new DEX. Um, uh, whenever you, if you buy it, uh, essentially, uh, when that, and then you sell the NFT forevermore, three percent of all the uh, open market sales of that NFT forever um, come back to your wallet, even though you don't have the NFT. <laughs> that's that's a new one for me. Yeah, that's how mine mine operated. Eighteen percent. All that well, kind of, as an individual, as opposed to the pool. You're saying that it's like a pool. Um, yeah, so like, so let's say, for example, uh, I'm limited to, to, to the SwapX uh, pre-sale uh, raise. I can buy you know, up to 10, 10 NFTs, um, and then uh, essentially, if, if they're, you know, whatever, $550 each, and then, and then I can sell that on into the, the, the open marketplace, and then, you know, if I hang on to them, I, I get to see you know, the, the exchange fees, which is probably what I'll do, but... I can sell it onto the marketplace at any time I want to for someone else that wants to have a percentage, like 10% of the, you know, the, the, the revenues go to, to the NFT holders, this 3000 NFTs. Um, but I, if I sell it on it, uh, apparently this is my understanding is that even though I don't even own it because I was the original owner. Uh, so my, my address is whitelisted for that NFT to receive those royalties. Um, forever more every time they change hands. So I don't, I, I don't know how whether they're going to need some cooperation there with the the marketplaces as well. You know, uh, and yeah. and the thing yeah. you you raised about you know washing washing it around if you potentially were trying to do that because it's a very low fee, a low low royalty percentage. So that that's yeah. interesting. Well, here's the thing: is yeah, okay. So if if I was on a front end that had a royalty that, that honored royalties and the NFT that I had, uh, if I, I was the royalty owner, then if, if I paid a fee, I'd be paying it to myself. Mm. So in the instance where you're saying like you have that possibility of having that fee there to stop that from happening, um, then I guess my NFTs give you the access to do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That gives That's you the ability to wash trade. <laughs> That's right. You, you, can, you, you can create transactions and you will pay yourself the royalties. But since we're on Pulse Chain and it is a new developed structure, that, like I was saying before, that it makes sense for a lot of front ends that do NFT stuff to not do that thing to dissuade people from coming to their front end by having fees and things like this. But there's already other marketplaces that do have a fee structure like nine millimeter. Right. So th that means that developers like us are probably going to f favor all the marketplaces in a, in a certain respect, but also push people towards the one that's going to actually generate fees for everybody. And then the cool thing about being able to whitelist people who own the NFTs at the time uh, allows for all sorts of possibilities. Now, I'm playing both sides of that field because, like I said, having the availability of claiming those royalties when you mint it originally, mm -hmm. uh, you can play all sorts of games with that, with owning the royalty advantage. Um, but... So, so that would that would say that your intent was to get the royalty and ship it off onto the marketplace that actually abides to the to those fee structures, right? And that was the game that you wanted to play with those NFTs. Maybe you get a couple of NFTs and you want to have access to all the whatever I may call VIP access to whatever it is, whether it's uh, indicators on TradingView, whether mm -hmm. it's strategies that are through uh, Tetra protocols, whether it's airdrops of future protocol, like what what was just recently released um, earlier from uh, 369 about Bean and the possibilities of there being more infrastructure in the future being laid out for the protocols in which they're doing, then we also have the same opportunities for doing the same exact same thing, like I said, with Trinity that we have, where you're able to 
turn an NFT into a contract and get 555 tokens. Well, what if the 555 tokens that you got from that contract had a price value of more than what the mint value was, and that particular NFT wasn't minted out yet? Then you have a, an arbitrage right away and access to whatever the fuck it is that I decide to give to the community. And the reasons why I'm doing it in the first place is because I appreciate my community and I know that they're out there. Uh, the average mint out for the each NFT was about f four, four NFTs per person. That's really? insane, in my opinion. Yeah, it was awesome. I it, it was it made me feel so good that I knew that I was doing the right fucking thing. That's for sure. In the process that we're going down, and I'm, we're just gonna keep going, right? It's validation. We're, yeah, so like I'm talking, I, I'm trying to get Nick is very busy with Pulse Marketplace, right? He's very busy, and I would love to try to get a situation where I can talk to him and see what he's got going on and see if I can interweave myself into there somehow. It'd be great, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then Pulse Wars also. I've been hearing some things about that. I'm trying to get in with the with that. Uh, I think I missed the cutout on that, but I think that there's a second run. Uh, that's going to be fun too, because that's gonna that's gonna create a, a a battle between people that actually trade these things back and forth too. So the whole royalty thing it becomes quite an interesting as aspect to just throw in more game into all the game the gamification that we're already adding to the thing in the first place. People don't even know the gamification because when I wrote the code for Ocelots in the first place, there's arrays that emit those whitelisted addresses that I already know. So if somebody were to mint and had uh, a sloth or a squirrel or both of them when they minted their Ocelot, my code tracked that. It put yeah. it inside of itself, said, hey, I, you're important. You, you support executioner and his community and his stuff more than anyone else and i don't even give a shit if you were to take that sloth and take that squirrel and go send it to another wallet just so you can mint another uh, ocelot and which i haven't said yet but if you if you had a, a squirrel when you minted you get a five percent discount right off the top if you had a sloth you get a five percent discount if you have both of them in your wallet when you mint then you get a ten percent discount and if you got royalties on top of it, that 10%, all the discounts still apply. And it doesn't matter which one you do, they all still apply. Yeah. But on top of it, if you got royalties, I have an array that sets a whole different wallet structure of, of people that I have lists for, okay, you, the type of support structure that I have is these, these different groups. So I'm collecting data sets for those specific, particular groups with no expectation of what I might do for those particular groups. But it could lead to like I said, all sorts of different things that you could really do, which was really fun with these NFTs that most people aren't used to because yeah. usually yeah. NFTs are just a fucking picture. Now, the pictures are pretty cool. That's great. I mean, pe there's even a rarity structure and people mm -hmm. find value in cool. all those things, and it's great. It's awesome. But we can turn this stuff on his head. Just like Ty was saying before, with his availability of using his NFT to create this market structure around all the stuff that he already has built, right? So... Yeah. If you if you knew that who it is that's involved in your community, then you can build out from that particular structure. Even if it's one other person, it doesn't matter. You have participation, and that is the biggest garnering of success that you could have is just participation in the first place. That's it. Yeah. That's all you need. So, I mean, other than liquidity and the other type of shit, but... Yeah, it, it. It, well, and all that stuff happens through time, regardless of whether you you tried very hard or not all you need is participation and you'll all those things will happen as long as it's a good product and it makes sense to people and it's fun it just gets people yeah. participating more and that's all people really want honestly they don't want to have to fuss and muss with a bunch of bullshit and if they can make money while doing it because you can arbitrage between i don't know multiple nfts that have erc20s that are attached to them that all have different it's not just my nft has all this this other access to all this stuff Squirrels has access to all his stuff. Sloth has access to all his stuff. They're all different shit. You got access. If you got all three of them, you're gonna have all sorts of shit, right? And in and of itself, that's I don't I don't know. Maybe my excitement is coming through and just how I'm how I'm speaking, and I should just calm t take it down. <laughs> no, you're bit. fine, man. I feel like I should just a tad. Uh, but I mean, this is the reason why I said earlier, like I don't even know when the sun is out. 
generally, I, I got to pop my head up and come into these spaces and listen, participate myself, and see what the fuck is going on sometimes. Because like I said before, you could be so busy on the things that you're doing that you're watching opportunities pass you by and you didn't know that that's what it was, right? Yeah. So that's why we're here. Let's do it, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, ne next week I'm going to, instead of let's talk Pulse and DeFi, it's let, let's hear Executioner's massive brain farts week <laughs> episode. <laughs> this is what I thought about this week. What happened? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just taking Sorry. a piss. No, that, no, it's, no, it's great, man. That's really, really great. Um, there's some cool, cool stuff. We, we, what, with uh, with Pulse Chain and, and the NFT marketplaces, we've got some really good options out, out there, like uh, existing. Um, like uh, I, I haven't been tra tracking NFT sales and and, and uh, how much volume's going through those places. Uh, uh, Ty or, or Execution, uh, have you have you noticed? Uh, is it pretty constant? Uh, a little bit down because the the chain the chain's a little bit down, or is it is it sort of uh, slowly growing or? Between, bet as far as what I've seen, between Mintra, uh, Pulse Marketplace, uh, 9mm, uh, NFTs on Pulse, um, HOA, HOA, and their whole, they have a whole community of NFT stuff there on a, like a the page for like their Free Mint Fridays and all that stuff. Like there is a, if you, just from what I said of, of just that, and I'm sorry if I missed other things, I'm, there, there actually possibly is other things that I missed. Um, thank you, Ty, also. And, uh, Pixel Park. Pixel Park's not Pixel Park. yet. Dude, and then more. Do you know what I'm Yeah. <laughs> See? There's a lot of activity, bro. There is. There is a lot of activity going on. And then Pulse Wars is probably going to garner more activity if, if people start to participate more, I know that there's a lot of interest from like NFT founders to get involved. So, I mean, it's just more things for the community, each individual community to actually be one whole big giant fucking community, which is awesome. Right. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. hundred percent. I, I was really pleased to see like early on, like, um, the, the, rep the, the representation from, uh, the, the NFT marketplaces was like jumped on straight away. So we've got a uh, really good uh, representation there, and um, they they make for the best posts as well. <laughs> you know, on Twitter, you know, like you, you see all the fantastic images, and then as you say, building in the util utility, like you got both you guys are, uh, are doing is just amazing. That's and we're going to be we're going to be adding automation by the Tetra Lab boys as well for uh, stuff on our DApps, so people can you know automate those well. Will, they'll be available for them to just use as opposed to having to build them. Um, so yeah, yeah. We're, we're definitely going to be working with the uh, virtual lab boys on that stuff. Um, and we just had a dev meeting yesterday and got to see all the wireframes of our uh, Bistro OTC. Hope to, have okay. that on, hope to have that on testnet in the next couple of weeks. That's, um, that's looking extremely cool. Cool, cool. Um, actually, Ty, if you, if you, if you can... Um uh, where, where, can, where, can, where can I find the testnet uh, link just off the website or yeah well if you from our website if you go to the um, the git book the git book uh -huh. is quite yeah. comprehensive yeah so on there when you you can pull down menus for the daps and it'll have a link to testnet daps sweet yeah I'll, I'll, I'll just follow my notes I'll be able to find that cool um, so um, any, any, any other gossip guys uh, anyone else want to jump up and talk? Uh, please uh, just, just ask to speak. Um, we'll uh, we'll start winding it down soon. But uh, but uh, if you haven't had a chance to, to get up and speak, please uh, please do. Just select the, the, the microphone or the speaker. Um, anything else you want to add, Executioner or Ty or anyone? No, I'm pretty pretty chill i think we've we've been going pretty ham on the socials with stuff the last few days um so yeah and, and i think we've done some you know we've got some up and coming streams as well so no, i think we're we're pretty good at the moment yeah cool yeah i think uh i'm gonna go and do my first youtube stream that and it isn't going to be your typical one. I'm just going to go on with Crypto Sloth, and we're just going to, as far as what I can tell, we're just going to ham it up about all sorts of stuff that other people 
the majority of people might find complicated. I don't know. We'll see. You know, crypto <laughs> stuff. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube by, by yourselves uh, is is interesting. YouTube together will be definitely interesting. Um, I'll, uh, so you're going to go on his, his YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. He, okay. uh, he has, I'll, I'll, I'll catch sure it. I'll check it out. Yeah, we'll see who else is coming on there. I'm not going to dox myself. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be no, that no, no. guy that does that. But uh, in and of itself, it kind of bored from the collaboration that we're doing, regardless, makes us talk to each other, uh, which isn't odd because we've been talking to each other for years, but now it's at a different type of thing, right? Like we're gamifying the whole system here or have the opportunity to do whatever it is that we desire um and and really kind of add some cool twists to things so sitting there and actually talking with with sloth and squirrel which i mean we're all really busy but when we do actually slam down some time and, and have some ideas between us it's it's kind of interesting i mean not very often do you have your own uh, light bulb moments but uh, it's it's almost destructive in a way, right? Because you have so many ideas that the first thing that you do is you need to slow down and actually look at each idea individually, test it, get data sets, yeah. run the ideas, see if it was a good idea, and then try to fucking destroy it. And that's why another <laughs> two weeks is needed. That's why you're saying I need two more weeks, because now we decided that we wanted to destroy this idea after we've spent all this time developing it, right? So, so you're, you're you're actually saying two more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I would say two more weeks, but Red Squirrel would say no. Now, no, don't need to don't promise anything, dude. Yeah, yeah, right, fuck it now. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, that's yeah. that's what we're. He's oh, he's really really good. I like I like Red. I didn't realize that most people have never heard him speak. I didn't realize that he doesn't speak. He doesn't usually do public speaking in any in any. <laughs> Generally, he doesn't, yeah. But, yeah, but he's yeah. everywhere. But, but he's everywhere, though. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. So, it's crazy. So you say, most just, people could never do. You never speak, but everybody knows you. How did you do it? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>